Hi, so this is a short video to demonstrate Open Pit Mine Design using our tools Design Excel. This tool is based upon Microsoft Excel and the Spatial Excel project product. I've just loaded um, Excel at the moment and there's a Spatial Excel tab as you can see here. I can show the Spatial Excel window by clicking the Show Spatial Pane and up comes Design Excel which works inside Spatial Excel. For the purposes of this demo I've actually created a layer file which contains all the data we need to do our open pit mine design. I'm loading the layer file right now and on the right you can see the various layers within that file. I'm going to zoom to it so we can see all the data. So what we have there basically is a topography layer which I can turn on and turn off. I've got a block model which you can see there all displayed. This particular block model is colored by grade and I'm not I'm actually cutting out some of the lower grades to get a better idea of the ore body which we'll look at in a moment. And then of course I've got some layers in which I'm going to create my um, open pit mine design. I've spread it's been split up into four layers, basically one layer for the crest contours, one for the toe contours, one for the road, and one for the surfaces of the benches which we are going to evaluate after our mine design. I'm going to take a view from the side to get an idea of the ore body we're going to be mining. There you can see it quite clearly how it looks. What I can do in the block model is just show you all the blocks so you get an idea of what's really there and how actually by cutting off the lower values we get a very good idea of the um, of the ore body we're going to be mining. How this tool works is it takes various parameters and the basic parameter is the line string which is going to form the basis of the design. The line string usually would be the top of the pit or the bottom of the pit and it's the perimeter of the area basically of the first bench that you're creating. So I've already digitized a base line string here and as you can see I've placed it fairly well at an elevation here of minus 50 meters below the surface and it seems to cover the ore body quite nicely over there. If I view from the top I can get an idea. There we go. We see it covers the value area of the ore body fairly okay. This string we can change at any stage later in the design, so it's not essential to be very accurate um, to start off with. To build my pit, I use the Pit Build tool. It's the most complex and comprehensive of a whole suite of tools we can use to build pits with. The other tools are more manual. They allow you to manually insert a road start into a base string, to manually insert a road, and um, we have various other tools to move line strings aside to project them out to build the pit. However, we're going to use the comprehensive tool called the Build Pit Tool. This tool takes a couple of parameters. As I said, you can enter the road width, whether you're going anti-clockwise or clockwise, whether you're building inwards or outwards, and the start offset of your road within the base string and so on. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this base string which I earlier digitized to be the base string for my design. To do so I'm just going to select the string. As you can see the string is now selected. I go to the build pit tool and I tell it to use that selected string. It now knows to build from that string. After entering my parameters I can just start capturing benches by typing in their parameters. So the first bench is going to have a width of 10 meters, a height of 10 meters. Face angle in this case we're going to use 60 degrees and the road angle is going to be 8 degrees. As I capture, I need to put in the height correctly here of 10. There we go. There we go, we can see the basic road starting there. I'm going to start typing in the further benches. And as I, oh, okay, let me just type it in there correctly. So 
60 degrees, road angle 8 degrees, and it builds it. I'm going to type in a few benches here, same parameters. So on, as you can see, we're building the pit automatically. Now what I can do at any stage, I can change any parameter. So say for example, if I wanted to make this second bench here, I wanted its height to be more. Let's just say it's going to be 20 meters. I just need to type in the new value. And when it's accepted, automatically you can see the pit adjust to accept that new value. What I can do, I'm going to put it back to its old value. There we go. I can also change its width, for example. If I wanted the width to be now 30 meters, not a problem. I just do it, enter it. As you can see there, it's made that particular bench 30 meters wide. To get an idea of the actual pit that we've created, I'm going to turn off the block model just to make it easier to move around. But if we look there, you can see the pit, you can see the road, you can see the toes and crests and so on. I'm going to just correct this particular value back to 10 meters because that's what I want. Okay, there we go, and so on. Let's get a side view of our pit as we've created it. Zoom fit to get the full picture. There's the pit as we're creating it. I'm going to type in a couple of more benches. As you see, as I type, they build. Whoops. There we go. Let me just go and correct this first one to make it. There we go. There's our pit. Get another idea of it here. There you get an idea of how the pit looks. Just going to turn off the geology there. There we go. Full view of our pit as we've created it. This is view from the top. Good, and let's create a couple more benches. Now, I want to create a switchback. So this next bench, all I need to do is enter its parameters, and in the switchback, tog switchback toggle, I just specify it's a switchback, and there we go, it puts a switchback in. And I can carry on building the next benches. And so on. And there's our pit. Now if I decide later, actually I did not want that switch back, I think it's fine not to have a switch back in this case. I just clear the toggle, move somewhere else, automatically it removes that switch back. Again, the tool is very flexible. The road start, I might want to move it ahead because I would like the end, the road end, to be actually further down. Um, I don't have to rebuild the pit each time. I can just actually enter a new road start or just animate it like I'm doing now and I'm increasing the road start and I'll increase it until it reaches a good spot and I think that's a good ending point and there we go I've ended my pit at that point now while I was doing this process 
each one of these layers over here was, is being populated with these pit. Okay, so to continue, um, after we've designed our pit, we um, can actually look at the data created if you want. For example, in these various layers here, I can actually browse the data in the toe contours. You can see the various line strings per bench with their lengths and areas already calculated. Same for the crest contours. There they are. What I can do now is generate benches, 3D um, surfaces of the benches. Um, to do that, I just click the Refresh Benches button. And automatically, you can see over here, it's created um, solids for the benches. Um, to get an idea of them, what we can do. To get an idea now, I can rotate to get the picture of the bench. The bench is created. There you go. You can see the solid surfaces created. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to view from the top. So what I can do now is actually evaluate these benches against the block model. To do that, I just right-click on the layer I want to evaluate. I go into Mine Design, Evaluation. It remembered my settings from before, so it knew that I used the layer this with the block model um, to evaluate with. I can choose a density from a variable density from the block model or a fixed one. I'm choosing a fixed density in this instance. And then I can choose the, the mineral grades I want to evaluate, which is going to be copper and gold in this instance. Since these are surfaces, I don't have to specify any extrusion heights or depths. So these columns here aren't really of any um, a need. I just click the Evaluate button, and the evaluation will go through. There my evaluation is complete. It tells me to evaluate 10 benches. I can close that. And to view the results, I can go into the, into the benches layer. And there you can see my benches, 0 to 9. And there's the copper and gold evaluations, the density that is calculated for those particular um, benches, which is fixed in, in our case. The used volume. Um, to see how closely the block model matched the um, data. As you can see, there's fairly good matches here. There we go. That, that's the evaluation of our benches. That's basically the end of our open pit um, mine design scenario.